Hey everyone, and welcome to the latest Eli podcast. Ruben and Frank, I'm Dave Zangaro. Uh, Josh Sweat, Pro Bowler. Yeah, what do you make of his season? Because seven and a half sacks, it was a good year. He ended up getting into Pro Bowl for Nick Bosa, who uh, had to had to bail. I guess he was injured, Nick Bosa. You know, he had he got a concussion in the Dallas game, but then you know he played Sunday. Um, so I'm not sure if it's related to that. I couldn't find any. Uh, yeah. And report he did a long interview with the writers out there um yesterday and didn't mention any injuries. He played almost all the snaps um on Sunday. So uh it, it's I, I don't know what it is, but um Josh Sweat will take it. And um, yeah. you know, it's you know, you kind of get used to looking at players a certain way. Um I thought Josh Sweat had a Pro Bowl second half of the year. I thought he played at a Pro Bowl level. I did not think he had a good first half. Um you know, I think he really separated himself from Barnett in the middle of the season. Um, you know, I kind of looked at both of them as just really underachieving maybe the first eight weeks or so. Uh, but after that, I thought Sweat was, even before he started getting sacks, you could really see him start to get some pretty steady pressure. It's a shame they didn't have him for the for the Bucks game. Um, yeah. And I guess if he's accepting this, I guess he's healthy enough to play. Um you know, because if you're an alternate, yeah, that's true. If you're an alternate, and you know, he had a he had an opera, he had a procedure uh, a couple of days before that Bucks game, uh, and wasn't able to play. Um, Life threatening situation, the Eagles said in a statement. Um, but yeah, if he wasn't able to replace Bosa, um, he wouldn't be a Pro Bowler. So I'm guessing he's healthy enough to to go down to Vegas. I guess the game's in Vegas this year. Um, yeah, well, they were saying he was close to being able to play. Yeah. Yeah. In the playoff game. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, he I, I did think he 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 really finally, that second half of the season, um, and again, it, you know, he didn't play at all in defense his rookie year, uh, played somewhat his second year. He's just kind of built up, and I thought the second half of this year, uh, he finally lived up to expectation. I mean, he's a fourth-round pick, so it's going to take a mm-hmm. while. You know, it's it's not like Barnett where you expect the production from day one. Uh, you know, it's going to take a little bit. Um, you know, it ends it ends some streaks for the Eagles. I mean, he's the first Pro Bowler um, on they've drafted on the defensive side since Fletcher in, in 2012. So it ends a decade of that. Um, and he's a young guy. He's 24. They haven't had a lot of young Pro Bowlers. The last the last Pro Bowler under 25 the Eagles had was Cody Parkey. And are we allowed to say his name? I guess we are. And then before yeah. that, it was Shady. You know, so so they haven't had, and the last, the last Pro Bowler they had who was this young, who was drafted in the fourth round or later, um, was Wilbur Montgomery. And so, you know, so they, they haven't had a lot of young elite talent. They've had a ton of defensive ends. This is eleventh Pro Bowl t- defensive end they've had. Uh, you know, William Fuller, Hugh Douglas, Trent Cole, uh, Babin. Are we allowed to say Babin's name? Let's not say Babin. <laughs> Um, is that a new rule? No Babin? Yeah, I'm fine no, with that. No Babin. Um, uh, you know, um, obviously Clyde and, and, and Reggie, um, they've, you know, Dennis Harrison, they've had so many Pro Bowl uh, edge rushers over there. They've always had good rush, edge rushers. Arwin make one? Um, he made it as a linebacker, um, right? He was an edge rusher, though. Yeah, he was an edge rusher. I mean, he's listed as a linebacker. Um, but yeah, they've always, they've always been able to rush the passer unless. Your name is John Harris, or uh, <laughs> you know, or uh, or Derek Barnett. But yeah, good for him. And the, you know, the kid works hard. He's gotten better. Um, I still he, think he he has level. I mean, he can get a lot better. I agree. I just I think the there's so much potential there. Yeah, I mean, he was raw when he got here, but um, they showed a lot of. You know, they showed a lot of faith in him with that contract extension in September. And and I think he lived up to it. And, you know, edge rushers get a lot of money. I mean, we talked about Derek Barnett's going to get – somebody's going to pay him $10 million a year coming off a two-sack season because he's – just because of his traits and his potential. Um, and Josh Sweat finally showed that, you know, sure what he could do the second half of the year. Um so good for him. Five, you know, it's funny. I got a tweet from someone saying, you know, how could this defensive line that I was cursing at all year have two pro bowlers? <laughs> because Hargrave goes as an alternate, Sweat goes as an alternate. Three alternates now, Jake Elliott as well, on top of Slay and Kelsey. So five pro bowls 
five Pro Bowlers for the Eagles, which is uh, which is good. Three from three from that defense. Um, yeah, so good for him. Yeah. What do you make of? I, I had a bunch of people complaining to me that uh, they shouldn't call these guys Pro Bowlers. Well, they're Pro Bowl. I mean, he's going to play in the Pro Bowl. <laughs> How do you not call him a Pro Bowler? I mean, it doesn't bother me. Whatever. It's not like there's some sacred you know, thing about you know oh he's not a pro bowler who cares i mean whatever he's a pro bowler and he'll always have that you know always be pro bowler josh sweat and it raises the bar for him you know because next year he can't he can't have five sacks or four and a half sacks um i, I think he's got to be a double digit guy next year you know the contract and pro bowl tag um he, he's got to be and i think it'll help if they nail that pick, assuming one of the one of the you know top twenty guys is a is an edge rusher, which I'd be shocked if it isn't, um, he'll have some help, which I you know he wasn't really getting this year. Uh, Ryan Kerrigan wasn't drawing a lot of double teams. I don't think Derek Barnett was either. So, yeah. uh, it, but I I agree with you. I, I still think he's still a young guy, um, and I, I think he's I think he's definitely got double um, double digit potential. Yeah. Uh, Want to go through the championship games? This is our first time talking to everyone since uh, since finding out who's going to the Super Bowl. Some interesting stuff on the weekend. Yeah. Which game do you want to start with? Doesn't matter. Let's start AFC. Um, okay. I mean, it looked like early in that game, it was going to be a blowout. Yeah, it did. Um, it was kind of like the first Bengals game. Um uh, I'm so impressed with that. I mean, you know, um, Zach Taylor is like <laughs> like a year ago. I mean, he was you – know, people were firing the guy. Um, that defense is something else. And uh, Burrow is, I mean, so impressive. That's a team that just doesn't have many weaknesses. And um, they play hard and they're relentless and they just keep coming after you. And they don't get down when they're – you know, when they're down and I was really impressed with them. That was not a fluke. Um, you know, you, you look at Mahomes' second half, I think he was through for 55 yards, two interceptions, no touchdowns. They adjusted beautifully in that it was second incredible. half. And there's they cover. Oh my God. I mean, he there's nobody open. And they've got they've got good weapons out there. Um uh, you know, Mahomes was he was he didn't know how to handle it. It was it was kind of shocking because you think of these guys as being you, know, you think of Mahomes as being invincible sometimes um he just had no answers um you know I don't think I, I you know Andy's lost a lot of these games man he's coached in eight NFC championship games he's been favored in I guess seven of them yeah. I wanted to ask you like what is what does this do for his legacy doesn't help. It's, you know, it doesn't yeah. help. The only one he wasn't favored in was the Rams, I guess, in 01 in St. Louis. Uh, that was, you know, the Kurt Warner, uh, Isaac Bruce, Marshall Falk team, all that. Um, but other than that, and they, and they had a pretty good chance to win that game. But uh, other than that, I mean, uh, look, he's a Hall of Famer. Uh, he's, you know, he's been to more Super Bowls than most people. He's won more playoff games than anybody other than uh, what Landry and and uh, Bill Belichick, but, um, you know, they were, what, eight, eight and a half point favorites, and they were up two touchdowns? I mean, you can't lose that game. You can't score three points. And I'll tell you what, I still blame Mahomes. I mean, it's – how many times have we seen quarterbacks, you know, make a throw at the goal line before halftime that cost them points? And it, it just – you know, it was like memories of Jalen against the Giants. Like, you can't throw that pass. You know, throw it into the 700 – I agree with you, but they should have had a timeout. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely I mean, should have had a timeout. You know, I mean, Big absolutely. Red burned one. And Andy's challenged. done so much better with clock management. You know, like in the, yeah. you know, the previous week, I mean, he had all his timeouts when he needed them against the Bills. Uh, but, yeah, that you just can't let that stuff happen. And a lot of coaches around the – just throughout the playoffs made really fundamental errors that shouldn't yeah. be made – you know, as far as timeouts and challenges and clock management and all, all that kind of stuff. And you hear, I heard uh, Matt Eberflus in Chicago isn't going to call defensive plays. His plan is to just be a head coach. It makes a lot of sense. There's so much on their plates. Yeah. 
And if you have someone you can trust to call those defensive plays and you can worry about higher level things and a lot of game management stuff. And like during the week, you implement your defense and you hand it off to someone you can trust. Taking away play calling on, on game day, it, it takes away a lot. I mean, it takes a lot off your plate and it does free up to do some other things. Yeah, there's no question about it. Um, yeah, I'm not sure Andy would ever give it up. I mean, he's, I mean, he's, he's done good. it at times. At times, he's given it to Marty at times. He gave it to Doug whenever they were up 30. Um, you know, I, I'm sure uh, the enemy's done it at, at some points. But um, yeah, I mean, I think, I think when we look back at Andy's career, it's, I mean, who knows what's going to happen here? He might win another one. But uh, for a guy with who's been in the playoffs, gosh, I looked it up 17 of his 23 seasons. To just have one one Lombardi is that's disappointing. For this team to have one, I mean this this Chiefs team alone, it's it's starting to look like, you know, uh, the window's still clearly open. They're still a very good team. They have a great quarterback in his prime, but windows can close. I, they really can close quickly, and it just feels like the Chiefs are. It, it honestly, it feels a lot like. It did with the Eagles. It feels like a team that's just not getting it done while they have a chance, and it's going to haunt them there. At least they yeah. got one out of it. Yeah, they got one out of it. And, you know, I think Mahomes – I mean, Mahomes is at the age where – I think – I mean, he'll be 27, I believe, when next season starts. When Donovan was 27, like he was already, you know, yeah. on the way on the way down. Um you know, I don't think we see that. I mean, it was a terrible second half, but um, you know, I think I think their window. I mean, the the Eagles' window closed really fast because Donovan, you know, he didn't take care of himself really. He he, you know, his fitness level, uh, and he had a lot of injuries. You know, he had a bunch of serious injuries in in those years, like you know, 05 and 07. and uh, physically, he just you know he couldn't get it done anymore. And um, I don't see that from Mahomes, and I think. Brett Veach is I, – I think he's one of the best GMs in the league. So I think I think they're always going to have good players. I'm not a huge Spags fan. I, I, I never was. Um, I think that defense has to get better. But uh, as long as you have Mahomes, I do – I mean, look, they won, what, 12 games. So I don't think they're going to go anywhere. I think they're going to be around. But I mean, you look at the AFC and, you know, so many of the – the league's good young quarterback, really good young quarterbacks are in that conference. It's not going to be easy to win that thing. It's incredible how many good quarterbacks there are, young quarterbacks in the AFC. It's yeah, and one of them's Joe Burrow. I mean, that guy is as cool as they come. To to do what he's done in a short time. I mean, rookie year, he's playing well, gets hurt, done for the year. To come back in his second year and to put his team in the Super Bowl behind, let's face an offensive line that still needs work. I, I've, I've been really blown away by him. And I mean, Jamar Chase has helped out quite a bit too. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's a pretty cool story. And uh, you know, like I, I think I mentioned once before, I have, I have a cousin who's a huge Bengals fan that lives, lives in Cincinnati. He's from, from Ohio. And um, you know, I understand the frustration. I mean, this is a franchise that hadn't won a, had never won a road playoff game. <laughs> had never won yeah. a road playoff game. Had won a playoff yeah. game since the days of, you know, Boomer and and you know James Brooks and Icky Woods. Um, so to see what they're doing now, um, somebody somebody tweeted to me they've won more playoff games in the last three weeks than the Cowboys have in the last twenty five years or something, which is pretty wild. Um, yeah, it's true. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, and let me, I, I, I gotta ask you this: like, when you see these young guns like like Josh Allen and and Mahomes in the first half, and and Joe Burrow, and you know the kid in San Diego, that's what you know the kid in San Diego. <laughs> but um, you know, does it make you look at Jalen Hurts any differently? I mean, I mean, I, I knew these guys were good. I knew these guys were better. I. I I, it's it's tough to watch it and think like, oh, well, Jalen's not making that throw. Jalen's not getting to that read. And I get that. But in a way, it almost seems unfair to like judge him based on watching these games because right. we know he's not that good. Right. Not yet. I mean, but right. it doesn't mean you don't see if he can't become that good. 
And and he doesn't like the, have that those he doesn't have those teams around him either. True, yeah, but but you could also argue he has a better O line than those teams. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. I don't but, know. I I think what we know what he is right now, and we know he's not good enough right now. And that's not no one's arguing against that. Like I don't even think Jalen Hurts would argue against that. You know, it's just can he get to the next level? I I, I don't know that. Um, there's some reasons to think he can. There's some reasons to be really skeptical of that. Let's talk NFC game real quick. Um, the Niners must be the best coach team in the world because they just don't have a whole lot of talent other than Debo and a defense that plays hard as hell under under D'Amico. But they're they're in every game. Um, you know, I thought they were going to win that game, um, but uh, I give the Rams credit. They they. Uh, I, I never liked that coach. I, I, I think I was always pissed at him because he got coach of the year over Doug in 17. I always thought that was unfair, but he, I mean, he's been to two Super Bowls now. Um, they're, I'll tell you what, good. I mean, he he looked a little overwhelmed at times. I mean, him yeah. and Shanahan are two very good coaches, and both of them did some wacky things. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. Um, yeah, yeah. You're right. The, um, I think it was. I think McVeigh had a, had a, ch- a one challenge that made no sense. Um, stuff like that. Um, Shanahan it did some weird stuff too. Yeah, some. I don't know. I. I, I mean, what? Uh, it's weird thing. I mean, Garoppolo's career one loss record is incredible, but I mean, he's not going to be their quarterback next year. Yeah, that's a weird, really weird franchise right now because yeah, they're pretty close to getting to the Super Bowl. And they're gonna have a new quarterback next year. The whole thing's really bizarre. And you know, they they have Trey Lance, but it's like part of you wonders, like, man, you're real close right now, obviously. Like, is Trey Lance gonna be able to do it next year? I don't I don't know. I don't know either, but I think I think it's pretty clear Jimmy isn't the guy. Yeah. I mean, but he wins. I mean, he wins most games, but D'Amico and you know, they I think they 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 ran out of steam a little at the end, but um, I've just been really impressed with him. Uh, obviously, the Packers game was an incredible performance, and and you know they they went head to head. You know, we didn't talk about Stafford. I mean, I'm so impressed with him. Um, you know, for that guy to play at that level after all those years in Detroit, losing and losing and losing, and and then come into that situation and 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 play the way he has. Um, you know, you got to feel good for him. I mean, it's it, I don't know how many losing seasons in a row they had out there, but um, I think I think the Rams got the better of that trade. <laughs> yeah, he's playing really well. He's fun to watch too. He's always he been fun to watch. There's just no one watched him. <laughs> you know, yeah. he's stuck stuck in Detroit, but he's been a good quarterback for a long time. I'm not I'm not very surprised by how well he's played this year. I mean, he's if the Rams win, he you look at his career numbers, he's a Hall of Famer. With a Super Bowl and like 10 million passing <laughs> yes. yards and touchdowns, because he's already like top 20 in every stat. So yeah, that's throw, true. You throw a Super Bowl in there, and it's like an Elway esque thing, like late in his career. I mean, he's not as old as Elway, but um, Matt Stafford on, you know, on a week from Sunday could become a Hall of Famer. 